the nerds have inherited the earth. <laughs> Greetings, fellow nerds. I'm Chris. I'm Michelle. And we are D's Nerds, and it's time to rank our favorite movies. So we've really got a big anniversary coming up for us. In three days, it will be our one-year anniversary of D's Nerds. And I... It feels like it's flown by. I can't believe we've done it. I mean, we've done over 100 videos at this point. And, um, you know, I think w whenever I uh, wanted to do the channel, I, my goal was, uh, I told Michelle, I was like, I want to have 100 subscribers, 100 subscribers in two years. And we now are sitting at 235 subscribers as of year one. So everyone who's subscribed to us, who's liked our videos, who's watched our videos, Thank you guys so much. I mean, it's been a blast and, you know, we're just going to keep on trucking. So we thought what better way to kind of celebrate our one year anniversary than to just kind of, you know, rank our favorite movies. And we've never done that on the channel and just it makes sense. And so whenever we say favorite movies, what does that mean? Uh, we had to set some ground rules. Of course, we had to, <laughs> um, you know, we, we decided that uh, franchises and namely trilogies and like, you know, sagas, things that have like a very definite beginning, you know, an end kind of thing. And franchises as well, they do count as one. So, you know, certain book series starring a boy <laughs> wizard counts as, and is on the table as one. And, and I don't know who, who might have ranked that or not, but we'll, you know, we'll just roll with it. So uh, that counts. And then just, but the overall thing is for us, what movies just we can watch time and time and time again i'm not saying that they're the greatest movies of all time but they're the ones that we love the most and and we just we can't you know if it if it comes on we're watching it my thoughts on that were a little different i went into it as like what movies am i always in the mood to watch i don't have to have like a specific feeling or a specific reason it's just like hey if you say you want to watch this movie no matter what i'm always going to say yes yeah so that's how I looked at this. And so I, you know, I think we have slightly different viewpoints on that and that's fine. And whenever you say favorite something, you know, whatever makes you happy and whatever, you know, makes you want to keep going back to the well, that's all that matters. So, you know, I'm excited to kind of get in here and, and dive in and look at these lists. So our number 10 pick is, boom, we had, I had Ocean's Eleven and I can't read backwards what you have. Interstellar. Oh, that's a good one. That one was on my cutting room floor. That one was on my cutting room floor. I think we each had a, about 30 movies apiece whenever we went through. Um, yeah, and that one was definitely on my cutting room floor. And um, I'll go first on Ocean's Eleven. Like, this is the type of movie that, you know, especially back when, whenever, you know, I had cable or we had cable, I would, you know, it would, you'd go across like TNT and this would be on. And it's just, it's a, it's just a funny movie. It's awesome. You know, you got like Brad Pitt and George Clooney just being their charming selves. I mean, the rest of the cast is just ace. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just really hard to, to not love this movie. Yeah, that whole franchise is a lot of fun. I mean, the first one is definitely the best of them, but mm -hmm. they're just good movies, mm -hmm. good characters. Absolutely. Um, for me with Interstellar, this one was, this one was like on the line. This is why it's my number 10. Because it can be a little bit of a mood watch, but at the mm -hmm. same time, I am obsessed with space movies. Mm -hmm. And I love this one in particular. I love the heart that it has and the deep story that it has. And then also the science-y parts of it are really cool. So I would just get really sucked into this one. And that's what made it, how it made my list. That one, I wouldn't say is a mood one. That one is a, you're not distracted. You're sitting down to watch a movie. That That's that movie. If you're doing it, just like have it on while you're like, I don't know clean the dishes or something like that not the movie for you yeah if you've never seen this i highly recommend that you watch it but do not watch it distracted and don't watch it with a screaming baby that no. was our first time um and you might want to turn the subtitles on subtitles are probably a good choice definitely all right our number nine pick is you had a knight's tale oh mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good one. And I had Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Very nice. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, yeah, that was definitely on my cutting room floor. It's an amazing movie. It's that's how I got introduced to Heath Ledger right there. It's, that one's really cool. Yeah, this is a movie I've loved since I was in high school, and it's one that it doesn't. It's just it's a lot of fun. It's very quotable. It's very 
I don't know. It's I feel like it's kind of an uplifting movie. Like you yeah. can't leave that, can't be done with that movie and not be in a good mood. So it's always a good one for me. It definitely hits the uh, the sports movie tropes, the and it, kind of inspirational thing. But instead of you know like basketball or football, it's jousting. And it was my first introduction to Paul Bettany as well. Oh yeah, Paul Bettany. Yeah, and we just get to see his naked butt. That's how we first meet him in that movie. <laughs> but, to trudge. To trudge. Trudging. So, uh, yeah, for me, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, this may be a, a very unpopular opinion. This is my favorite Indiana Jones it's movie. It's mine, too. Yeah, and that's one thing that we definitely agree on. I mean, you know, gosh, you know, Sean Connery as Indy's dad and you know, all this, I mean, you've had all this buildup, you know, like where they really don't like Nazis and who really does like Nazis? They're dumb. But, I mean, it's you have all that buildup across two other films and it's just everything's awesome here i mean you know the search for the holy grail i mean it's a great adventure in and of itself and you know it, just everything about it is just i can watch this film over and over again it's it's just amazing yeah that's definitely the one i've seen more than any of the others mm -hmm. all right our number eight pick is i had jurassic park back to the future trilogy oh yeah that one was uh man we either like had it in our top 10 or we had it in our cutting room floor so far. Yeah. So um, so I'll let you go first on Back to the Future because I love these films. So I think I got introduced to this, I don't know, it was maybe around 11 or so, I would guess, mm -hmm. when I very first saw these movies. And to me, these are this movie, these movies are one complete story, which is why I, I, think, I, that I think that they need to stay together. Absolutely. Um, but there's such a good science fiction for kind of your, for your, everyday science fiction like mm -hmm. watcher someone who doesn't necessarily want to watch like super deep science fiction but they you know don't mind dipping their toe in that would be my mom i think yeah. um <laughs> yeah. and i say that i don't think that's a bad thing but i think that they're perfect movies for that because they get enough of that element in but also get a lot of humor and a lot of you know like the romantic moments and yeah just all sorts of things i mean i th can you name a more iconic duo than doc brown and Marty McFly. And Marty McFly. I mean, not, I mean, it's going to be pretty hard to top that. I mean, and their chemistry throughout those three movies is just amazing. Yes. Um, you know, for me, it's, I mean, Jurassic Park. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, it's a great movie when it's groundbreaking for its visual effects and its use of CGI. And that was done in the early 90s. And it still holds up today. Uh, everything about this movie still completely 150% holds up to this day. Even a lot of the questions that it raises holds up to this day. And, and it's, it, that is the sign of a timeless movie. This movie is the definition of timeless. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, it, it made me fall in love with dinosaurs. What can I say? I mean, it's, it's just, to me, it, it, it's, it's a classic. Our number seven pick is... I've got Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And I've got the Hunger Games trilogy. Well, I guess quadru quadru quadrilogy? Yeah, quadrology? Be, well, <laughs> if you're talking about the books, then yeah, you're right. It's a trilogy, but in the films, yeah, it was a quadrilogy. But It, it committed the Hollywood sin of splitting one, one book into two movies, yeah, but YOLO. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. But um, So Terminator 2 Judgment Day, I mean, this is one of the ones I grew up as a kid loving. You know, had posters of it. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in that role is just amazing and the thing i love about this film over the first terminator is this one really has a lot of heart to me and it just it carries a lot of weight and instead of it being you know i feel like the first one's very much like a monster movie in a way like a like almost like a a chase kind of slasher kind of almost film you know, this one is more like you know a sci-fi you know film that raises a lot of questions and it really goes deep. And I mean, you really like feel for uh, for John Connor and the Terminator and their relationship in that. So, I mean, this is by far, I mean, this is a really good movie. I love this movie so much. Those did not make my top 10, but I will say that one was better than the first one, which I complained about rather endlessly until he finally got me to watch the second one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, Hunger Games trilogy, I love the books. And so for me, 
falling in love with the movies was just a nice bonus because that doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. But I thought the, the performances were phenomenal. I liked the way that they built out the world because the books are told in Katniss's point of view. Mm -hmm. And so in order to make the movies work, they sort of have to flesh out that world around her and let you see things that other characters see. And I just really appreciated that and appreciated that Suzanne Collins worked really closely with them on that to make sure that it still stayed within her vision of things. So they're good to me. Yeah, and I, a thing I love about those is what, exactly what you said, Suzanne Collins being so involved and they didn't stray. I mean, you know, uh, I'm looking at you, Divergent, because I mean, I mean, th that's an example of what happens when, you know, the creator of that stays involved in it and makes sure that it it stays true to it. You get you have to change things in book adaptations. Not everything you can't bring it 100 percent to it. It just doesn't work that way. First of all, especially from Katniss's point of view. That's a ton of exposition to try to do, and that does not work. So I thought they did a wonderful job of transitioning it, and uh, you know, that was another one that was on the cutting room floor for me. Our number six pick is RoboCop in Star Trek Kelvinverse. Oh, this one's going to be controversial. I would love to hear you talk about that. So, <laughs> oh, but I love those films too. I didn't have them on the cutting room floor, but I really love these films. So uh, for me, RoboCop 1987, I feel like all my movies on these lists, like I have to put like the year to make sure that we understand which one I'm talking about. But, um, you know, I mean, this is such a sci-fi classic. I mean, Peter Weller in the role. I mean, all the little commercials that are really funny. And it's a really short movie too, compared to, especially compared to stuff that comes out today. But I mean, it just works. I mean, everything from the score, I mean, you really, they establish, you know, like Murphy really quickly and you instantly care about him so that when he goes through what he goes through, you instantly feel for him. That's really hard to pull off. You know, a lot of times they have to do like an origin story and then kind of go into things and, and they just pull it off right here. And, and it's just, it's a masterpiece in sci-fi and it's, it's a master class in sci-fi. So I highly recommend this one. And uh, yeah, I would love to hear you talk about the Kelvin verse here because yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Okay, so I love all the Star Trek things. Mm -hmm. I like all the other movies too. Mm -hmm. uh, these to me though, do a lot of the things that those movies tried to do even better. Mm -hmm. um, now I won't say that necessarily like everything is better and I wouldn't say even the casting is necessarily better but I think the casting is at least equally as good. Mm -hmm. They do a great job of picking people that fit those original series characters um but i can appreciate the faster pace of things in these yeah um because star trek especially the older stuff can move a little slow it can and if i were talking about things that i want to rewatch over and over again and i can just get sucked into i don't want to get i'm so getting sucked into slow things is a lot harder mm -hmm. and so if i'm talking about like i want to get some star trek in and i want to just enjoy it i mean we watched the whole trilogy in one day on Valentine's Day because mm -hmm. that was what I wanted to do. I mean, that's how much I enjoy these. And so, I don't know, but I know that's controversial. I know that's weird, but I love these. I really do. I mean, I I completely understand where you're coming at from it. I mean, they are really good. I, I would make the argument that Into Darkness is definitely my least favorite, especially, I think, because they tried to go too close to, you know, Khan and and there, I don't know, there was just a lot of controversial stuff there. I would absolutely agree with you on one, or like the first one in 2009 and then beyond. Those are amazing Star Trek films. I don't care what universe they are. I love those films, absolutely. So, I mean, I have no issues with you there. I mean, we both grew up, I mean, I, geez, I remember being like four or five years old and watching brand new episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation because my dad, I mean, we may have to have him on the channel because, I mean, you talk about a Star Trek fan. He's a huge Star Trek fan and he loves these movies. And, uh, you know, he loves like even all the new stuff as well. So, um, you know, we've grown up with it. We love it. And, you know, this, I mean, it, it's just, to me, it's just as valid as the original series of Next Generation. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hateful comments for that. And it's okay. All right. So our number five pick is, I have Twister. Mission Impossible series. Oh. That was on my cutting room floor. It was a close one. Oh, God. Now this one predates you. Definitely. Like my parents and I, we would watch this film. This was the first DVD I ever bought. True story. I mean, we had it down. We could quote this thing from beginning to end. 
And I mean, we would say the same things like at certain points. I mean, it's just, it's a great movie, great adventure. And, you know, Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt, you know, sparks are just flying. I mean, they have great chemistry. And I, I mean, I still love this movie. But then we met, and I think, have you watched it before? No. Yeah, I showed it to you, and then you fell in love with it, and it's now one of your favorite movies. And so we will quote it together. And it's, again, I just, and also rips Philip Seymour Hoffman. He's one of the best parts in this film, as well as Dusty. And he was in The Hunger Games. And in The Hunger Games as well, so. Mission Impossible series. Oh. I guess that. I could have probably picked a movie or two out of this. I think probably if I'm really looking at it, Ghost Protocol is probably my favorite one of all of them. Mm -hmm. um, but these are just such fun movies. I mean, you talk about just like getting in there with some fun, like light science fiction-y stuff and also just super action. Tons of Tom Cruise running. Uh, running, 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 <laughs> running, running. <laughs> uh, and just, I don't know, interesting stories where they kind of they kind of delve into that James Bond land without being so dark and serious as James Bond yeah. can get. And so I love that about them. In their movies, I can pretty much at any point just pick up one and be like, yep, let's watch this. This is good. Mm -hmm. And they're they're fun to watch. They're not hard to watch. They don't require a lot of like, you know, mental gymnastics in order to understand what's happening, but they're fun. And I do love um that the, the ghost protocol the most i think because i love the cast the most in that one yeah that that was an amazing cast and i'll say this about mission impossible i mean it's one of my favorite series as well i mean can you name another film franchise that you know is six films in and each one is really good you know you can make the argument that the second one's a little you know, it's a little weak, but it's still very watchable and very entertaining. But I mean, we're six films in, we're about to get seven and eight, and there's no signs of it slowing down. And I Tom mean, Cruise doesn't age. Yeah, and Tom Cruise doesn't age. I guess Scientology's working for him, but I mean, it's just, I mean, it is so consistent, it's so good, and I mean, right now, I think it's one of the, the best long-running franchises in Hollywood in that it's just extremely consistent. And not just consistent, like, you know, it's good, like, consistently great. I mean, for me, three through six are just bonkers good. Bonkers good. So, I mean, I mean, try to name another one. I'm, I would love to hear it. I also think that three through six have a nice, like, little kind of back storyline tying them together that yeah. one and two don't really have as much. So, I think that helps those. Yeah, kind of, you can almost look at three as almost like, in a way, kind of a soft reboot. Because it kind of like one and two are almost like kind of standalone kind of things. And then three was the beginning of like, like a, things feeling connected. Yeah, things feeling more connected. But I mean, yeah, love it to death. All right. Our number four pick is I had Halloween from sure. 1978. And I had the Jurassic Park series. Ooh, yeah. I will say that's another one that I think is very consistent. Some people may disagree with me. But yeah, I, I think it's very consistent. Yeah, I love these movies, which is funny because I used to not like want anything to do with these movies there's a whole story there but <laughs> we'll have to tell that during like a 10 minute talk because it's it's a good one it's one of my favorite personally uh but i actually did not see these until what like two whatever they re like i must have been 2014 when they came out for like the 20th anniversary or something like that in the yeah. movie theater um they re they came out and split in 3d maybe yeah it was in 3d um, and we went to see it and that was actually my very first um exposure to them and fell in love and then we had to immediately go and like rent the rest of them on Amazon that existed and then of course now that each of the new ones comes out we always go see them yeah but Can't I love miss. them dinosaurs are another thing that I've learned to really love in kind of the same way that I love space stuff so yeah um, absolutely fun things I mean you know what I've said about Jurassic Park and I think you know that's my absolute favorite I think it's pretty much head and shoulders above any of the rest but that just means that's as good as it is because the rest of them I think are really consistently good and I love them to bits. I can watch any of them at any point in time. Um, and yeah, I completely agree. So Halloween, 1978. Come on, man. John Carpenter, The Shape. I mean, this is a film I probably, I know I've seen it every Halloween for the past 20 something years. This is just, I mean, when you talk about slasher, uh, this, is, um, this is the perfect movie. And it, I love that it doesn't have very much gore in it. I love that it actually takes its time and kind of building the tension. And that last 15 minutes is truly terrifying, even to this day. I think John Carpenter's a genius. And, uh, you know, it's, this has definitely led me to, 
you know, as I've kind of gotten older, I've kind of reached farther into his filmography and I've yet to find a movie yet that I don't love. So, I mean, yeah, it all starts here and, and, and it starts with his awesomeness and, and thank you, John Carpenter, for making that film. All right, we're in the top three, Michelle. This is, this is getting kind of interesting. So, mm -hmm. all right, our number three pick is... I had the Dark Knight trilogy. I had the Indiana Jones films. So, the Dark Knight trilogy. I almost picked out the Dark Knight out of this, um, but you know, to me, it's kind of similar to to a lot of your picks. It's one, especially Back to the Future. It's one complete story, and uh, it has a beginning and it has an end. And I mean, at the tip top of that is the Dark Knight, but Batman Begins is an absolutely wonderful. Uh, you know, origin film for Batman, and just um, it's almost like the definitive origin film for Batman. And of course, The Dark Knight is the legendary film that, and it deserves every bit of it. I'm definitely not one of those people that have kind of revisionist that have gone back and said, "Oh, you know, this isn't really that great." No, this is still probably my favorite version of Batman, uh, over, um, over especially over like a number of films. Uh, but yeah. I mean, everything about it, Christian Bale, Michael Caine, I mean, the casting is just beautiful. You know, the, the scores are wonderful. You know, everything about it, it, it's just darn near perfect for me. So, I mean, it, it's it's something I go back and I revisit frequently. So for me, the Indiana Jones films are very much a nostalgic thing. Um, I grew up wanting to be an archeologist mm -hmm. all the way through my second year of college, actually. Um, ended up being an English teacher go figure but I, well, I'm glad because that means I got to I got to meet you so uh, I really fell in love with these films because I kind of got to go and and sort of live vicariously through those movies and get to do all of that cool archaeology stuff and travel all of these cool places if I had to pick one like he said before it's definitely Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade that was even long before him I felt that way that was one I always watched most as a kid too mm -hmm. But um, I just love these. I will say I could live without Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It's not that it's a totally crappy movie or something. It's just for some reason that one always feels out of place to me. The premise is a little off to but me. It's the whole, I think it's the whole like alien -y thing that feels funny yeah, to me. That's, yeah, but, but it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. jive with the rest of his usual stuff. But anyway, I, I still love these movies. Well, I, I am appreciative that they didn't just go back to the Nazi well. We have, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of like, where do you go? And now we got a fifth one coming out here pretty soon. So we'll see how that goes. All right. So our number two pick is... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from okay. 1990. And Harry Potter series. I'm really shocked that you got, that you've ranked those. <laughs> um, are you shocked about this one for no. me? <laughs> so, so uh, do you want to go first on this? Sure. So obviously um, these are ones that I love, but also that I came in later than the average person on these. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had a student beg me to read these books and that's how, uh, I got into them. It was, I don't know, it wasn't all, it wasn't that many years ago actually, but he said I had to read the books before he graduated. And so I went that Christmas break and I read all of them and then ended up buying a set of the movies so I could watch them after I finished each book. And I was hooked, I was sucked in. And so I can totally appreciate as a person who loves books being adapted into movies, how well they did that. I know some people complain about certain aspects of it, but I always just have to look at, look at that through a kind of a, obviously not actual filmmaker, but a filmmaker's lens where you just have to understand that you can't put everything in there. Mm -hmm. um, I will say there are a couple spots where that wildly changes things, but I still feel like I love those movies. And I have seen those movies a lot of times and they do not decrease in my love the more that I watch them. So mm -hmm. just good, solid fantasy story with a definite foot sticking in reality, which I always appreciate too. I love that. I love that those films feel like they get more mature as those kids get older. Mm -hmm. So you start off in that, I mean, it's almost like a kid film, the first one is. And, you know, by the last, you know, couple, it's serious. It's dark. It's really dark. I mean, it's almost grim dark. Like, it, you would almost think it was a Zack Snyder movie, which, you know, I know if I said that, you know, that, that instantly half the critics would hate Harry Potter, so whatever. But, um, you know, my pick is, I think this is probably not a big shock, is, you know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film from 1990. Honestly, they really haven't topped this film since. And it was the first movie right out of the box. To me, it still works as a comic book film. It still works 
it, there's really nothing corny about it except maybe some of the fashion choices and some of the music choices. But everything else and the fact that the turtles look that amazing in 1990 with puppetry work, that just shows what Jim Henson created and the just what a genius he was. And truthfully, even with the look of the turtles, even as technology improved, this was still the best they looked. It's just an absolutely stunning achievement and it's amazing that it still looks like it does. And you know, I understand we're getting the CGI film that's coming out here that's produced by Seth Rogen's company and that's great. Uh, I'm really excited about it, but you know, give me another one of these with, with the puppetry work and you know, go back and, and do it right because I would definitely uh, you know, be there opening night to see it. Okay, and I would, just, I would like to say before we reveal our number one picks that to Paraphrase the arrow. If you don't know our top picks without even us saying them, you have failed this channel. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> if, if you have watched this channel at all, there's no surprise here because I think we haven't watched, looked at each other's list. And, uh, you know, matter of fact, let's just guess right now what our number one is. Okay, I'll guess yours, you guess mine, and we'll see how accurate we are. Okay. This is going to be a test of our marriage, so... Yeah. Excuse you us. You might watch something implode on screen here, yeah, you so might, stay tuned. Yeah, you, you might be watching a divorce in the making. <laughs> All right, so I think your number one pick is Lord of the Rings. And I think your number one pick is Batman 89. Well, guess what? Our number one picks are Batman 1989 <laughs> and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I'm so shocked, and I'm actually really happy that we got that right, because I really didn't want to divorce you. I kind of like you. Yeah, exactly. So, so okay, you know, yeah, turn loose. You know, I know this is, you know, like, this is like the story of your life, basically. Excuse me. No, I meant that in a nice way. And that, you know, like, you know, that would be like the one thing that you, that is your story, like, that you love so much. Yeah, I guess, I mean, as much as I, you know, I love Harry Potter and I have lots of Harry Potter stuff, but I think it's because Harry Potter stuff is easier to come by than Lord of the Rings stuff. Lord yeah. of the Rings is kind of like old, I guess. Like the book is older and then the movies are older. And anyway, not the point. But I love the epic fantasy of these. I love that it is an entirely different world. I love that it is so rich and built out and that not only does this exist, but all of these other books that tell different parts and different parts of the history and all of that of middle of middle earth it's just incredible to me because because the thing i like with my nerddom is to dig deep mm -hmm. i want to dig all the way down to the bottom and get to where i have no more new information to find i don't want to just dip my toe in like across a lot of little things i want to dig and so i love that this allows me to do that and i think the story is beautiful i think it's so cool that there are languages and the characters are interesting and and well developed and I think it's really easy in, in fantasy stories especially to have like these kind of throwaway characters that are almost more like a sight gag than an actual you know thought out character and these do such a good job of that and then of course Peter Jackson just turning the whole thing into this amazing trilogy is just a wow um and a lot of people thought of that as unfilmable yeah I mean that if, if you have any interest in how this was made at all there's a book called um, anything you can imagine, Peter Jackson and the Making of Middle Earth. It's about 600 pages or so. It is 100% worth reading because it talks about all of the different things that he went through and trying to even get the rights to make the film and get anyone to volunteer the money to make the film. Um, all the stuff about writing the scripts and trying to, to create all of these things that didn't exist when he was trying to make this movie. It is really interesting and to me all of that, plus the fact that he made extended editions without anyone having to beg him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was no, there was no release the Jackson cut. No, back then. <laughs> no, he literally just filmed a bunch of extra stuff, knowing that was exactly what he was going to do. Like the the studio budgeted him for him for it. Yeah. Um, and then putting tons and tons of special features, like he made those movies for nerds, and I'm here for it. Like more people need to make movies for nerds, <laughs> knowing exactly what those people want. Because the nerds <laughs> have inherited the earth. So, uh, but you know, like I said, no shock, Batman 1989. I may call the Dark Knight trilogy like darn near perfect, but it doesn't have Michael Keaton and it wasn't the Batman that I grew up with as a kid. And yeah, so yeah, there's probably some nostalgia there, but still taking that all, this is still a really strong film and I love this film, you know, even as, 
you know, trying to take the nostalgia part out of it. And I mean, it goes back to having Jack Nicholson as the Joker. I mean, he is one of the definitive Jokers. You know, he's right. I mean, it's him, it's Mark Hamill, it's Heath Ledger. And then, you know, even though I'm not crazy about the Joker movie, I still got to hand it to Joaquin Phoenix. I mean, he's beautiful in the role. But I mean, you have Michael Keaton as Batman, the complete left field, unlikely choice for the Cape Crusader, and he became one of the definitive Batman. And everything about it, you know, the, the gothic look, I mean, I've made two videos on this, including the very first video of the channel. It's not the greatest. <laughs> Definitely go go get my review of Batman 1989 uh, to check that out. But I mean, you know, it's just amazing, and it still works to this day. And, uh, you know, I probably watch it at least two, three times a year, so. There it is. That is our top 10 favorite films or film franchises or whatever. So, you know, guys, like I said, one year in, you know, we're really happy, you know, to be doing this and sharing our nerddom with you. So we just appreciate, again, you know, I said at the beginning of the video, everybody who's watched our videos, anybody who's liked uh, or subscribed, you know, thank you so much. It's been an absolute blast, and we're just going to keep on trucking. So, matter of fact, I've got a plan here to do a, a watch along for Batman Begins. We're going to start the Dark Knight trilogy because I'm continuing still. We're still going through and doing the live action on that. And, you know, I know you've got some stuff you're working on as well. And, you know, we're just going to continue on going and we're going to keep hitting as many subscribers as we can get. If that means we stop where we're at right now. That's fine. If we go on and do a million, probably not, but that's okay. So, guys, uh, so. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel if you like what we're doing here at D's Nerds. And uh, also don't forget that we are on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. So you can follow us there You know, if you're missing us in between videos. And also, of course, we have merch. We have our link down in the description where you can go buy your know, mug or uh, you know t-shirt and just support the channel. So guys, once again, I am Chris. I'm Michelle. And we are D's Nerds and you guys have a great safe rest of the day. Bye. Bye.